Okay, uh, good morning. For everyone who doesn't know me, my name is Talia Razi Kleinman and I'm uh, working at Volson Medical Center. And I've come to talk to you this morning about how we do breast MRI at our institution. Now, as you all know, breast cancer is a very common disease. It's the common, commonest uh, cancer in women. One in eight women will, have, will be diagnosed with breast cancer, cancer during her lifetime. This is a picture of our nice MRI suite and the topics I will talk about this morning. So breast MRI is the imaging modality with the highest sensitivity for breast cancer detection. It mainly relies on the vascular characteristics of the lesions. In a meta-analysis published in 2008 of 44 studies, the uh, weighted um, sensitivity of the MRI for detecting breast cancer was 90%. However, the specificity was much lower, only 72%. The MRI sensitivity for detecting DCIS was lower than for detecting invasive disease, and mainly due to lower detection of low and intermediate grade DCIS. Uh, in 2009, the Israeli Ministry of Health uh, um, adopted the uh, guidelines of the European and uh, American guidelines regarding uh, both screening diagnostic and uh, doing MRI for assessing silicon implants. In Israel nowadays, we do screening MRI between the ages of 30 and 70 for patients with BRCA, who are BRCA carriers, patients with P53 and P10, as well as for patients with uh, accumulate lifetime risk of more than 20% uh, according to the different uh, model, models. We also use MRI in a different diagnostic setting and for assessing silicon implants. And here are some examples. This is a young BRCA carrier. She had a screening MRI and a small irregular mass in the left uh, outer breast, you can see it here, um, was detected and was uh, biopsied under MRI and turned out to be ductal carcinoma in situ. This patient had her MRI for assessing residual disease as she had lumpectomy of the left breast with uh, involved margins. The MRI also detected a small occult cancer in the right breast. This patient was a young patient with a bloody nipple discharge and uh, no abnormality on the mammogram and ultrasound. Uh, we, she had an MRI and the MRI detected a small irregular mass behind her left nipple turned out to be papilloma on an MRI guided biopsy. During breast MRI, we need to have at least a 1.5 Tesla magnet with a detachable table and a dedicated breast coil. Now, the dedicated breast coil needs to have uh, needs to be a multi-channel area uh, coil with at least seven to sixteen channels. Should create a high signal to noise ratio to, in order to create high quality images. The coil should be covering both breasts with extension into the axilla. And the patient comfort is a major issue. As you can see in these two images, the coils are well cushioned because the patient lies prone in the machine for around 20 to 40 minutes. Uh, some coils have open access in order to perform breast MRI guided procedures and this is a very um, uh, good advantage, not all of them. Now, positioning is a very important issue in breast MRI because the patient lies prone on her belly for a very long period of time and we need her to stay still during the study. So we need to um, teach the technologist to make sure that the patient lies comf comfortable and uh, before we start the exam, we have to make sure that she doesn't have any problems, nothing itches, nothing uh, uh, is... Um, bothering her. Regarding the positioning of the arms, uh, most uh, institute use the arms up and the reason for using the arms up around the head are several. Uh, most of the patient find it to be a more comfortable position. 
It also gives us an easier access for the IV injection site. Uh, it uh, gives us less wrap artifact of the shoulders and arms around the interest area of interest, which is the breast. And it gives us a better vision of the axilla. Uh, and another issue which we need to teach the technologist is how to position the breast in the coil. The breast should be hanging freely down the coil, completely, fully, and uh, with the nipple straight down. Inconsistent positioning in secretion examination makes it very difficult to compare the findings and I will show you. On the left image you see the breast. Now when we look at the exam we look at this as if the patient lies supine but actually during the exam the patient lies prone. Uh, however we change the image in order for us to make it easier uh, to look at the exam like we look at uh, CT. Um, so in this patient on the left, uh, uh, she had a mastectomy of the right breast. The left breast lies freely and fully in the coil. However, when she came back the following year in 2006, you can see that the breast doesn't lie fully in the coil and makes it very hard to assess the area of the anterior part of the breast of the retroareolar area. So this is something we need to teach the technologist. Um, regarding the technique, uh, breast MRI relies on the demonstration of the vascular characteristics of lesion. Hence, non-conscious breast MRI is not diagnostic for the presence of breast cancer. And this is a major important issue because some of the patients come to our uh, clinic and say, I don't want to get injection, I don't want to get gadolinium. And we need to ask them if the reason is to assess either if she has a known breast cancer or she's um, doing screening examination, uh, not giving conscious doesn't, give us, doesn't do any good. So she cannot have the exam. Uh, what we inject is a gadolinium-based uh, contrast agent uh, with an amount of 0.2 millimolar per uh, kilogram of body weight. Uh, we prefer giving it as an infusion with a rate of 2 to 3 millimeter per second. Uh, why do we see the cancers so well? Because malignant uh, cells um, creates angiogenesis around the tumor and these uh, new vessels are increased in number making the contrast uh, get in very strong and fast however these new vessels are uh, damaged they have increased permeability and uh, with AV shunting giving uh, a rapid wash off of the contrast this is opposed to the breast parenchyma itself um, the whole uh, characteristic of uh, the enhancement of lesion in the breast, uh, we divided to the first two minutes, the, how the uh, lesion enhances and how it progresses over time. And we have noticed that uh, most of the lesions that have a progressive curve are usually benign, as opposed to most of the lesion with a delayed washout are malignant. Uh, in this, in this um, um, example, you can see that the cancer, which is a very irregular mass, has a uh, fast uh, enhancement and rapid, and very strong enhancement with a delayed washout. And the fibroadenoma has a slowly progressive curve. However, not all lesions read the book, and in this case, the fibroadenoma has a delayed washout and the cancer, uh, which is a very irregular mass, uh, tends to have a progressive line. So we don't just rely on the contrast enhancement, but also on morphology. Uh, now, as uh, the enhancement is a very important tool for assessing the lesions in the breast, the T1 weighted uh, sequence are the most important um, sequence in the exam. Uh, which uh, in the T1 we uh, do, most of us do it uh, with uh, fat suppression. We, some places still do it without fat suppression. Uh, and it's a dynamic scan. We first scan the patient without the contrast and then we do between three to five repeated scan with contrast. These scans should be short, uh, around uh, up to 90, min 90 seconds, and they should be sequential. 
uh, and uh, we assess the enhancement of the lesions or the parenchyma with the subtracted imaging. And I will show you. The picture on the right is uh, axial T1 with, the, uh, with fat set. We can see the parenchyma, but there's no contrast in the image. We, and the image on the left is the uh, T1 axial image with contrast. You can see there's contrast in the major vessels in the mediastinum. And you can see that the lesion enhancing in the left breast. If we take the, the, if we subtract the image without contrast from the image with contrast, we get only the enhancing area without the parenchyma. Now this is the subtracted image and this makes it much easier to see the lesions that enhance on the machine. Uh, we also need to add the T2-weighted sequences, either with or without fat, in order to help us uh, characterize the lesion that we see on the MRI. Uh, the lesion with the fat set helps us see better high T2 lesions, such as cystic lesions as well as uh, lymph nodes. Uh, some benign masses have typically very high T2, like just as lymph nodes and myxoid fibroadenomas. However, we also need the non-fat set uh, image um, in order to assess better the tissue ass uh, assessment, the anatomy, the axilla, we see much better on the non-fat set image. Uh, clips sometimes we also see better on the non-fat set image. In this example, you can see uh, T1 weighted uh, sequence. Post contrast, we see a small uh, oval enhancing lesion in the outer part of the left breast. It has a very high T2 uh, uh, sequence on the T2 weighted image with fat set, and it's a reniform shape resembling uh, intramammary lymph node. Um, this is uh, a lesion that has a slow uh, moderate enhancement with a very high T2 lesion. It's a uh, uh, progressive curve and this is an example of a fibroid uh, of a fibroadenoma. However, some of the cancers also have a very high T2 signal. Uh, here you can see the actual T2 weighted uh, image with fat set and there's a very high T2 lesion that has a, a strong rapid enhancement with a progressive curve as you can see here also on the uh, MIP images, and this turned out to be a mucinous carcinoma. Um, now, should we examine only one breast or both breasts at the same time? Now, um, the guideline published by the ACR and USOBI recommends simultaneously imaging of both breasts. Uh, this helps us compare the fibroglandular tissue between both breasts, just as like in mammogram. And, it's, um, and when doing screening, you cannot screen only one breast, you screen both breasts. Um, and uh, this imaging of both breasts has shown that in patients coming for assessment of extent of disease, a contralateral breast cancer was found in 3 to 5 percent uh, of cases. Um, in which plane should we uh, uh, do this, this scan? In the sagittal imaging plane or in the axial? Uh, now, when, starting, when we started doing breast MRI, we started with the sagittal view. Uh, the uh, sagittal view correlates roughly to the uh, oblique mammography view. However, we cannot compare side to side, only on a very complicated workstation layout and it does not simul simul simultaneously uh, show us the contrast enhancement of both breasts. However, in the axial view, it correlates to the CC view. It's much easier to compare both breasts and side to side, and it's a uh, true uh, simultaneously in, uh, assessment of the contrast enhancement of both breasts. However, the sagittal has a more homogeneous field and of fat suppression and uh, image, and uh, it has a smaller field of view, and uh, phase encoding is superior to inferior. In the axial view, uh, due to the large field of view, there's inhomogeneity of the field with a uh, less uh, uh, good homogeneous fat suppression. And uh, during axial image, we encode right to left.
giving us, in some cases, the wraparound of the arms. You can see here that in axonal image we image right to left and in sagittal image we image inferior to superior. Um, when do we use sagittal display and why do we need it? Um, we can do sagittal display either from the reconstruction of the dynamic views or do a delayed uh, view uh, with contrast. Uh, we need the sagittal view uh, in some cases in order to correlate with the MLO view or if we look for uh, in order to do a biopsy either on a second look ultrasound or on an MRI guided image, the additional sagittal view gives us a better assessment of the lesion in terms of where it locates in the breast. Uh, diffusion will be talked later. Uh, regarding uh, assessment of silicon implants, uh, we don't need contrast if the reason for the exam is, con is uh, silicon uh, assessment. Uh, the silicon uh, sequences are T2-weighted sequences, uh, either invasion, both invasion recovery for fat suppression and chemical saturation for the water signal. Um, now in this case you can see this is a T2 without fat sat. It helps us uh, see better the anatomy. The silicon implants are behind the pectoralis muscle. Uh, this is a, a steer fat sat T2 image. We can see here a small uh, high T2 lesion and a little bit of um, fluid surrounding the left uh, implant. Uh, on the silicon only view you can see that this uh, internal uh, a mammary lymph node has silicon in it. Could be due to either silicon gel bleed or a prior uh, rupture and uh, replacement of the silicon implants. Uh, again, in this uh, case, you can see that in the T2 non fat set, in the T2 non fat image, we can see that the, the silicon implants are pre pectoralist muscle. <laughs> and we can see that the linguini sign of both implants. Uh, when we look at the T2 fat set image, we cannot assess the implants. However, if they are high T2 lesion, it's easier to see them uh, in this sequence. Um, so, uh, when we, um, at the end of the exam, we do the post-processing of the image. We do the subtracted image, we can either do a reconstruction, uh, and we do the MIPS, the maximal intensity uh, projection. We also use the curve enhancement analysis, uh, either with or without the GAD, depending on the different uh, computer that we have. Now scheduling. Scheduling is a very uh, big issue with regarding to breast MRI. Uh, Delisle and, uh, and friends had, um, uh, they um, studied 50 normal breasts of premenopausal women coming for assessment of extent of disease. They assessed the contralateral breast and they noticed that the parenchymal enhancement was the lowest on days three to seven and was highest on the last week of the menstrual cycle. Hence, their recommendation was to perform and do the study on days of the first half of the menstrual cycle. And uh, in this example, you can see two different patients, one with uh, heterogeneously dense breast and the, the other one with uh, extremely dense breast. Uh, however, when doing the MRI, the patient with the less dense breast had a higher background enhancement due to doing the exam on week three, as opposed to the patient with the denser breast but no background enhancement on the uh, beginning of the menstrual cycle. Uh, breast MRI is highly influenced by the background enhancement. Having a background enhancement of the parenchyma makes it um, uh, difficult to read the exam and uh, hence we tend to do it on the first week, on the beginning of the menstrual cycle. Uh, other issues that uh, contribute to the high false positive on the MRI are uh, fibrocystic changes and benign masses that we see. Uh, only about 30% of breast MRI guided biopsy turn out to be malignant. 
regarding hormone replacement therapy, uh, this also uh, turned out to have an hormonal effect on the breast parenchyma and, uh, and hence when we examine patient with HRT we should considering uh, discontinuing um, the treatment for four to six weeks before doing the scan. Regarding the, lac the lactating breast, we don't do breast MRI on pregnant patients as we need to inject contrast and we cannot do it on the first half of the, of the se first 17 weeks of pregnancy and then the rest the patient cannot lies, lie on her uh, abdomen for the exam. Uh, however, in the lactating breast, uh, there is very high, uh, there are the hormonal uh, estrogen and progesterone levels are high, uh, making, uh, increasing the glandular tissue and alveolar development. And um, this hormonal state relates all to, to increased vascularity flow and permeability. All, all of this creates a very uh, increased enhancement of the parenchyma in the uh, MRI study. You can see here, this is a lactating BRCA carrier. You can see there's a very increased um, dense breast with a very uh, intense enhancement of the parenchyma tissue, makes it very difficult to find small cancers in this setting. Same patient, two months after stopping breast, uh, feeding still there's a lot of parenchyma in the breast however much less uh, parenchyma enhancement and much easier to find cancer in this setting. This is another example same patient BRCA carrier with intense enhancement and a year later she has less uh, alveolar tissue and uh, nearly no parenchyma enhancement. Uh, anyone has any idea what's going on here? Well, this is a BRCA car carrier that only uh, breast feed from the left breast. So you can see the differences. This is the right breast. She has much less uh, alveolar tissue and no uh, enhancement as opposed to the breastfeeding breast. Um, however, regarding to patient with cancer and a lactating breast, we know that, um, f that the, although the, there's more uh, parenchyma in the breast, and which is highly and uh, brightly enhancing, the cancers tend to have a lower T2 signals and intense more than the parenchyma and wash out. So we see them better on the exam as opposed to the parenchyma. And this is a, a breastfeeding patient. Uh, she has cancer, she has multiple lesions, she has a multicentric disease and you can see that the uh, tumor enhances rapidly and faster than the parenchyma and we can see it well also on the MAP images you can see that she has several cancers so on a lactating patient we don't do screening studies but we do uh, an assessment of disease because we can see uh, the cancers. When do we scan patient post-treatment? Uh, post uh, lumpectomy, if the question is regarding residual disease, we usually ask the patient to have at least two weeks and have her metallic skin stitches out. She also needs to understand that she needs to lie on her abdomen and uh, stay still for at least 20 minutes. So she needs to have her uh, stitches and be able to raise her arm to sit in the uh, machine. Uh, patient with uh, other instances, usually we prefer to wait at least six months post-surgery, so the edema and the post-surgical changes will be uh, less. Uh, regarding radiation, we also prefer that the patient will be at least three months post-radiation in order to have less edema and uh, enhancement in the breast. This is an example of a patient she had bilateral lumpectomy of both breasts. Uh, the one on the left was a uh, long time ago, about 10 years ago, and the one on the right uh, was less than a year ago. You can see the scar in the T2 uh, non-fat set image, and there's uh, enhancement around the stitches uh, in the scar area. So to conclude, uh, non-contrast breast MRI is not diagnostic. 
we do bilateral axillary images and the T1 dynamic scan is the most important scan of the study. We add the T2 with or without fat set in order to characterize the lesions and we use post-processing for an easier assessment of uh, lesions in the breast, either subtraction, reconstruction, MEPS, and curve analysis. We have special sequences for assessing silicones, and scheduling is an important issue regarding breast MRI. Thank you very much. Thank you.